I'm going to show you multiple different attractions to do in Pigeon Forge that are not Dollywood. I'll be talking about multiple different water parks, alpine koshers, and many other thrill rides, including some pretty darn crazy ones. So if you're planning on a trip to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee soon, make sure to stay tuned and watch this whole video so you can know exactly what to do when visiting Pigeon Forge off with our first water park. Now I said I wouldn't mention Dollywood, but I never said I wouldn't talk about their water park, which is Dollywood Splash Country. Now like Dollywood, it has some great landscaping and great food, and also one thing to note is that many water slides have a fairly low height requirement of 36 to 42 inches, so this park is very family friendly. And it does have some pretty good throw rides too as you have River Rush, which is the park's water kosher. I haven't ridden that, but I've heard it's pretty darn good for a water kosher. Then you also have Fire Tower Falls, which is a very simple body slide that just has one 70 foot drop, but those are always fun because you feel like you're hydroplaning above the water. And because of those two slides, this place is actually a pretty good water park to visit. And along with the aforementioned theming, landscaping, and food, this place is definitely worth a visit. Plus, it's only 55 bucks, which is about average, I would say, for a water park. Definitely not cheap, but also not crazy high. So, honestly, I think Dollywood Splash Country is a very good water park to visit and is well worth your time and money. Now we have our next water park, that being Soaky Mountain in Sevierville, Tennessee. Now, this is kind of cheating, as Sevierville is not... Pigeon Forge, but Sevierville is only a 15 minute drive away from Pigeon Forge, so that's why I decided to keep this in. Unlike Splash Country, Soaky Mountain definitely focuses more on the thorough rides, as you have two great looking water coasters that both feature half pipe walls that the ride slides up, which those are always fun, provide some nice weightlessness. And then they also have two different trapdoor slides. Both the trapdoor slides look pretty intense. So because of that, this park definitely gears more towards the thrill seekers than the families. But as for the families, you have plenty of attractions to do as there's a couple family raft slides, some wave pools, kitty play structures and whatnot. And plus the benefit of this place is it's about 10 bucks cheaper than Splash Country at $48. So because of that, if you're in the area and looking for another water park to visit, if Splash Country isn't interesting to you, then Soaky Mountain is definitely a second option, and is definitely worth it when you're visiting the Pigeon Forge area. So as for some extreme thorough rides in Pigeon Forge, the main one is the Mountain Monster. This thing is home to three great thorough rides, including Monster Drop, which is a 200 foot drop tower that only has a seatbelt. That is 15 bucks a ride. And then you have Monster Launch, which is a unique straddle based slingshot where you're basically sitting back to back on a bike seat and that costs 25 bucks. And then one thing to note with Monster Launch is you do need two riders. And also note, you'll probably only get one, maybe two flips if you're lucky, just depending on how you and your partner swing your way around. And then you have the biggest and baddest attraction there, which is known as Monster Swing. Now this is actually two attractions in one, as you have a drop tower and a sky kosher. What happens is you're lifted up the 200 foot tower and then you're pushed forward as you hang 90 degrees straight down facing the ground and then you're released like a normal sky kosher and swing about getting some great views of Pigeon Forge in the distance and the Great Smoky Mountains. At the end you're lifted back up the tower and you're given the choice to either have a drop tower back down to the ground which is the more popular option. If you don't want the drop tower, you can always be hoisted slowly back down. And that, being their signature attraction, is 40 bucks. So pretty expensive there. Because of all three attractions' high prices, I believe your best option is to get a combo ticket that includes all three, the Monster Swing, Monster Launch, and Monster Drop, for 60 bucks. Because if you do the math, Monster Drop is 15 bucks, Add that to Monster Launch, which is 25 bucks, and then add that to the Monster Swing, all that adds up to 80 bucks. So if you want to do all three, you're saving yourself 20 bucks by going with the combo ticket. So if you're a thrill junkie like I am visiting the Pigeon Forge in the Smoky Mountains, 
I highly recommend the Mountain Monster. Great attractions. Let's move on to what Pigeon Forge is most mainly known for, that being their Alpine Koshers. Now, in my opinion, the most recognized Alpine Kosher there is definitely the Smoky Mountain Alpine Kosher, which gets credit for being the longest Alpine Kosher at like 3,900 feet of track, which isn't too far off from Rocky Top Mountain Kosher, which that has like 3,800 feet of track. And one thing to note with both these mountain koshers is they're 18 bucks for an adult to ride. Now, one thing to note with all mountain koshers is these will all give you great views of the Smoke Mountains and the surrounding Pigeon Forge area. And if you've never even done a mountain kosher before, one thing to note is you can control your speed. And if you go max speed like I do, these Alpine Koshers often deliver some crazy laterals and can even give small pops of airtime here and there. And now for the most funny Alpine Kosher is easily goats on the roof. I mean, why would anybody think about putting goats on a freaking roof, first of all? And <laughs> forgetting about the name, this is the least interesting mountain kosher as you still get some great views of the Smoky Mountains in the overall Pigeon Forge area, but it's definitely the shortest one at just over 3,000 feet of track and doesn't seem to have the most exciting layout at least compared to the others. And one thing to note with Goats on the Roof, at the time that this video will be published, Goats on the Roof is actually the cheapest option as it's only $12 for an adult to ride. Now for those prices, I would say Goats on the Roof is most worth it, but Smoky Mountain Alpine Kosher and the Rocky Top Mountain Kosher do give longer rides. So it's really up to you if you'd rather spend less money and get a shorter ride or spend more money and get a longer ride. But honestly, the Alpine Kosher and Pigeon Forge, all three of these are worth it. Even though they're pretty expensive, you're not really gonna find too many other Alpine Koshers, at least in the United States. So that's why I feel like the all three of these Alpine Koshers are definitely worth riding when you visit Pigeon Forge. So let's move on from three standard Alpine Koshers to two way more unique Alpine Koshers. First of all, you have a very unique Alpine Kosher in Ski Lift Shootout Kosher. And as the name implies, you're seated in an inverted gondola that can swing, and you're trying to shoot targets throughout the ride. Now, one thing to note, maybe it's just my horrible aiming skills, but like, I just feel like with this ride, you're going too fast to reliably hit the targets. Maybe that's just me and my horrible aiming, but <laughs> other than that, this ride, it's fun, but it's not the most comfortable as it does have over shoulder strengths and the turns and transitions are overall fairly janky, which isn't a surprise for Alpine Koshers, but still, just one thing to note if you go to ride it. But despite all that, I think it's definitely worth it as it's a very unique experience. Then you also have Avalanche Snow Kosher which is a more familiar looking Alpine Kosher that allows you to control your speed unlike the Ski Lift Shootout Kosher. But one thing that makes this one different is it has more standard two across roller coaster-esque trains and not like the inline seating trains that you typically see on normal Alpine Kosher. And just one thing to note with Avalanche Snow Kosher is it does have a fairly tame layout compared to other Alpine Koshers in the area but it's still a fun experience. And then you also have a tubing hill that you can use both during the summer and in the winter. Now, obviously, if you've ever done tubing, tubing is much better in the winter, but still, it's nice that they give you the option in the summertime. Then you also have axe throwing, which I've never done before. If you're into that stuff, that is a nice addition, but just note that the tubing hill and the axe throwing are not included on the wristbands. So speaking of the wristbands, you have one hour, which is more than enough you need for this park, and that costs 29 bucks. Then you also have a two hour option, which honestly, I think one hour option is perfectly reasonable for this place, but the two hour option will cost you almost 40 bucks, so 39 bucks. And honestly, final thoughts on Rowdy Bear Ridge. This place is pretty cool. It's definitely a unique place as ski lift shootout kosher. It's definitely a one of a kind experience you can't get anywhere else. So for that alone, I honestly recommend this place, and it's a fun place that you can easily spend a nice hour at and have some fun in Pigeon Forge. 
So now let's move on to one of the most unique attractions in Pigeon Forge, that being Paula Deen's Lumberjack Feud Adventure Park. Now this park is mainly known for the Flying Ox, which is a unique combination of a zipline and a suspended coach. Now this thing looks pretty fun, it could be pretty tame, but it can also be pretty thrilling. I personally haven't ridden it, as this place is quite expensive for what you get, but this thing is definitely unique, and if you're willing to spend the money, I, I would definitely recommend it. And then you also have the attraction that the park is most known for, that being the Lumberjack Feud Show. Now, like the name implies, this is just a, a show with a feud between two different lumberjacks. And also, you can get dinner during it, but that dinner is also nothing special. And this thing is pretty pricey, but it seems to be a pretty good show from what I've heard. So, if you're into that kind of stuff, I'd say go. Moving on to the Adventure Park, you have the High Woodsman's Challenge, which is a ropes course. It takes you pretty high up and has some decent obstacles, but then you also have Timber Towers, now this is a pretty big bungee jumping tower with two side by side. And it's really nothing too special, but it's definitely a fun experience for sure. Then you also have logger sports. Now these aren't any sort of crazy sports, just a lot of like balancing and testing your agility and whatnot. So if you're into that kind of stuff, I say go for it. Now here's the blow when it comes to Lumberjack Feud Adventure Park, and that's the pricing. As the show alone, is 40 bucks for an adult. For a show, that is stupid expensive. I'm sorry. Like, I mean, it must be a pretty darn good show for that price, but, like, just 40 bucks for an adult is kinda stupid. And then, if you wanna add the adventure part to that cost, that's 65 bucks for an adult. Now, that's not horrible. I mean, 65 bucks, you're getting into Dollywood territory. If I had to choose it between this and Dollywood, that is a no-brainer. And if you want more information about why Dollywood is such a good park, watch till the end of this video as that video will be listed in the end screen, so stay tuned. As for my final thoughts on the Lumberjack Adventure Park, this place has some cool attractions, but it's just the pricing that kind of ticks me off about this place. And the other thing that stinks is there's no way to buy single shots for any of these attractions, like for example the Flying Ox. As if you're like me, you just want to do the Flying Ox. <laughs> and there's no option to purchase a single shot for that. Even if that was like 20 bucks, I still wouldn't mind it, as that's like the price of like the Alpine finishers. So like, I just feel like if they had like a discount ticket just for the Adventure Park, or if you could purchase single shots for the Flying Ox, that would change my opinion on this place. But it seems to be a pretty cool place, just on the expensive side. If you really like shows and you're willing to spend the money, I would recommend this place. But for anybody else, it's a hard sell. I would recommend any of the other places that I mentioned in Pigeon Forge. Now the one thing this place has going for it is it's pretty unique. But other than that, I, I don't really recommend it. If you made it this far in the video, I just want to thank you for watching the video. And if you're new here, remember to like and share this video with anybody you know who's visiting Pigeon Forge soon. Then also subscribe to Southeastern Thrills so you can keep up on the latest content coming to the channel. And then also remember to check out my video on how to have the best day ever at Dollywood. And also, peace.